and exhale, hands down. Good, curl the back toes, lift the back knee, use your low belly, scoot that right leg back up. Whoo, downward facing dog. Now I want you to pause for a moment here and I want you to feel the difference between the right side and the left side, okay? Take a breath. Here we go. Left leg up. Pause just for a moment. All right, we talked about firing the energy out through that left foot. You can do the heel. You can do the ball of the foot. Left toes are going straight down. Okay. Let's build a little strength in that belly. Inhale. And then exhale. Scoop the low belly. Round it out. Inhale. Stretch it as straight as that leg will go. Exhale. Scoop the low belly. Scoop and round. Shift the shoulders over the wrists. Inhale one more time. Exhale, pull through, crescent on the inhale. Good, hands out of the equation, shoulders out of the equation. Let it go. Good. Take an inhale, bend deep into that left knee. Exhale to straighten out. Inhale to bend, and exhale to straighten. Good. Keep breathing, just a little bit of love for that right hip flexor, so as. Shoulders back, chest up. Ooh, for three. Just build a nice, strong heat. That left leg, two. One more. Good. Slowly come back to crescent. Scoop the low belly. Reach through that right heel. Good. Take an inhale. Reach those arms up. And take an exhale. Hands down. Woo. Inhale. Left leg up. Bend that knee and hinge that hip. So again, watch the left shoulder on this side. It wants to come up. Keep squaring the shoulders off. There you go. This heart is still reaching back towards that right thigh. Inhale, straighten back out. Exhale, pull through second round crescent. Inhale, arms up. Hands to your heart. First one's a doozy, okay? Take a big breath in. Exhale. Good. Now you can reach it back. You can tap. You can hover. Exhale, lift you right back up. Nice and slow and steady. For three. Good, two, keep using that low belly. Scoop, 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 scoop. Good, one more. Come back. Inhale, crescent, big breath. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, three-legged dog, stretch it up. Exhale, pull through, pigeon prep. Ha, 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 ha. What? Oh, whew, yeah, we'll need that hamstring. We'll get it at Art of Hanuman. Okay, proud little pigeon chest. Go ahead. So take this knee and help a little bit more. Yep. Good. So scoop the low belly right here as if the navel was going to pull back to that spine. Okay? And then maybe lift one hand. Keep the engagement in the low belly. Maybe lift the other. If both hands are at heart center, maybe reach the arms up. Good. But it's a super active pose here. Very different than sleeping pigeon. Good. Stay with me for three. Use the belly strength. Two. Woo. Hands down. Nice and slow. Curl the back toes. Lift the back knee. Sweep that left leg up. Good. Exhale. Let's pull through for a crescent. Inhale. Arms up. Good. Hands to your heart. <laughs> Take a big breath. <laughs> Hug that knee up. <coughs> Grab that hamstring. Roll the shoulders back. Here we go. Inhale to just as straight as it'll go. And then exhale. Just as straight as it'll go. There's not a need to, to shove the hamstring straight. There's just a little extension. <laughs> for three, good, for two, and nice and slow, reach that leg back, reach those arms up, inhale, Whoo. exhale, low lunge, inhale, three-legged dog, stretch it up, exhale, downward facing dog, take a breath, I hope <laughs> that both legs feel a little bit Similar, right? A little bit like they're the same. Good. And drop your knees. Cross your ankles. Find your bum. 
and sit back. Okay, so make sure you're a little bit staggered from your neighbor here. <coughs> if you have blocks, you can use them. If you don't have blocks, you don't have to use them. It's the same exact lift. It just doesn't look as high without blocks, okay? So if you have them, use them. If, you're, if not, your hands are just going to go right to the ground there, okay? So <clears throat> two bandhas we're going to work. It's all belly strength here. Yudhiyana bandha, I'm going to scoot my low belly back to my spine, okay? Mula bandha is the pelvic floor lift. We're going to talk about both of those a little bit now and a little bit later, okay? But that is what's going to lift me into uh, my tush coming up off the ground. I want you to avoid pressing your hands into the mat. I can press my hands into the mat and literally not do anything with my belly and I still get up off the ground. Don't do that. <laughs> As I lift, I'm going to think, can I take that navel back to my spine? I'm going to take an inhale and on the exhale, it's going to go up and back down. So my hands are like accessories. They're not really doing any of the work. Exhale up and back down. Okay, so make sure the ankles are crossed, make sure the knees are up, shoulders back. Stay for the breath in. Exhale, lift, scoop the belly. And slowly switch on the inhale, and slowly lift on the exhale. And switch, and lift, and switch, and lift. So we're gonna work a couple more. If you don't have blocks, you just don't come as far up off the ground, okay? Use the low belly, scoop, 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 scoop and come down, and scoop, 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 and come down. You can even try your fingertips if you want, as long as that low belly's doing the work and not your arms. Good, for three, for two, and last one, last one, lift, 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 exhale, give it a rest, lean back, ha. Ah. Okay, so the second little hoorah here, we're going to see if we can lift the feet, okay? So if you're newer to these kind of lifts, it might just be the tush that comes up off the mat today, and that's okay. If you're not new to these lifts, those, uh, those feet are going to come with you. So it's going to look like inhale, exhale, lift, and come back down. Otherwise, it's just the tush that lifts, okay? But think about, I want you to think about, for lack of better terms here, like a friendly gut punch. <laughs> it's like somebody's coming right up here, to almost knock the wind out of you. That's that uplift that needs to happen from the belly button back to the spine, okay? I wouldn't come around and friendly gut punch any of you, but I want you to have that feeling that it's like, ooh, there's the lift, ooh, every time, okay? So ankles crossed, knees up, take a breath in. Exhale, lift the tush or lift the tush and feet. Exhale, come back down, switch your legs. Exhale. So use the inhale to transition, use the exhale on the exertion. Switch. So think about that pelvis going up and down. Instead of forward and back, it just goes back up and right back down. <laughs> scoop the low belly, scoop the low belly for three, Woo, for two, and <laughs> exhale, take your legs out, hands back, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Okay, one more. Yeah. <laughs> it's all for the greater good of your handstand. That's going to happen here in just a few moments, okay? Legs up. Okay, so we're going to work on pike handstand in a little bit. We're going to show you the shape right now, okay? So as legs reach out, you can press the ball, the foot, or the heel. It doesn't matter as long as those legs are active. I'm going to do the same work here. Inhale. I'm going to exhale, lift. So it might just be the tush that lifts. If I want to lift my feet, i got to pull them back a little bit. So the hips shift back um, behind the wrists. So it looks like inhale, exhale. Okay. If I try to lift my feet and keep them way out there and keep this stack, you're going to find it here. You're going to find the same thing in pike. Gravity will take you down quickly with the extended limb. Okay. In this case, it's your feet. Okay. So if you think, I don't know, maybe I want to lift my feet, bring your hips back just a few inches, scoop that belly, dink, and they float, okay? So think about what you want to try, just the tush or the tush and the feet. Take a big breath, roll the shoulders back. Exhale, lift. For three, it could be like a, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> that could happen. And exhale, come down. Good, give 
in a moment. So the hip flyers, the hip flexors are going to fire, but the quads might also do a weird, crampy thing for a moment on that one, just because they're the bigger muscles, so they're going to they're going to take the activity in this one. Okay, so that's why it's important to fire through the balls of the foot or the heel. Okay. Big breath in. Again, scoop the low belly, lift, and then decide if you want to add the feet. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so come down. Uh, all right, that's over. That's the good news. <laughs> all right, let's vinyasa out of it. You can cross your ankles. You can step back. You can float back. Vinyasa. Whew. Downward facing. Dog. Drop those knees. Drop those forearms. Interlace those hands. We're going to take a little bit more of an active dolphin here so that we can create the space in the lats and the side bodies and start to really fire those shoulders for something good. Okay. Curl those toes. Lift those hips. Dolphin. Now in dolphin pose, good, you're on your forearm. Interlace your hands. Now in dolphin pose, you're, you're in a shorter stance than down dog. So you might have to walk the toes up a little bit. And if your hamstrings are really tight, especially if you do a lot of kind of running, cycling stuff, you might have to keep a bend in your knees in dolphin. And that's okay. It feels good on the low back. It releases the hamstrings a bit. Doesn't put the body in that stressful <laughs> couple <laughs> breaths, okay? Now the hips are high just as if you were in down dog. Good. The heels have a heaviness about them just as if you were in down dog. And you're breathing into the space in the side bodies as you use your forearms almost as if you were going to just press the top of your mat away from you. Yep, there you go. The side bodies get a beautiful stretch. The head is free. Nothing's going on with the neck, with the jaw. Nothing's going on there. A big breath in. Good. Your rest is child's pose, but your knees are going to drop together. Your arms are going to drop back behind you for child's pose instead of out in front of you. So that palms are face up. Now I like this variation of child's pose because the front shoulder can just be heavy here. There's just no activity that has to happen in the front shoulder for this to feel really, really good. Good. Is that okay? Okay. And then nice and slow, you're going to come back again. So you're going to work dolphin kisses this time. The hands are going to be in the same position. The elbows, guys, watch them. They're shoulder distance apart. If we get them any wider, we lose some of the strength from the front shoulder. So we got to pull them right underneath the shoulders. And then those shoulder blades draw down the back body. Okay. So dolphin kisses, I'm going to look up towards the area of my thumbs. I might not get the gaze all the way there. But I'm going to inhale as I move towards my thumbs, use my shoulders, exhale as I push away. Okay. If I want less, I don't go all the way to my thumbs. If I want more, I go past my thumbs. But my tush stays pretty high. I'm not coming into a forearm plank at all. I don't want to come that far into it, OK? So curl those toes. Lift those hips. All right. When you're ready, inhale as you move towards your thumbs. Exhale as you push away. Inhale as you move towards them. And exhale as you push away. So push, push with an intention, right? You are pushing into that mat to create the space in the side bodies, to create the heat in the shoulders, the strength in the shoulders for three, whoo, for two, and exhale carefully, knees down, whoo, hands back, forehead rests, child's the front shoulder a moment to release heavy. So I kind of remind your shoulders that this is a break for them so that all activity releases. And nice and slow, you're going to come back up. Okay, so just sit back on the heels for a second. So dolphin is a really nice side body opener. It's a really nice shoulder strengthener. So if we get into handstands and you're like, I don't know, I just don't know if this is me today, then you're just going to come back to a dolphin variation. So dolphin variations are the first one where we just held and breathed and stayed. 
The second one is those little dolphin kisses. Another option would be to pause and start to lift the opposite leg to create a little bit um, more challenge in the postures. There's a lot of options in dolphin. It's a nice place to start building the strength for your handstand, okay? You ready? Okay. <laughs> So I don't want you to freak out that you're not always by a wall. Because here's the thing about the wall. If you always learn to kick up into handstand with a wall, one day the wall is not going to be there. So you have got to start to build this positive muscle memory in the body of can I keep a maintained hop up and hop down? Can I take that kind of freak out moment out of it so that you can be in the middle of the room or you can be by a wall or you can be in the middle of nowhere? and still feel comfortable enough to at least start to work a couple hops, okay? So the wall's nice, no doubt, if you're learning handstand, but I don't want you um, to teach yourself to go to the wall and then, and then rip yourself off the wall because that's not really teaching your body any awesome muscle memory. <laughs> In my personal opinion, other teachers will say different things. That's, that's me, personally speaking, okay? So. Three things have to happen when you hop. Your feet have to push off the ground. Right? Your low belly has to do that scooping action that we've worked. right? And then the pelvis has to have a forward motion in space. And the reason hops are hard is because all that has to fire at the same time. <laughs> so I'm just going to come here. So the first one I'm just going to show you is a little cannonball hop. The big toes are touching. Watch those shoulders we talked about drawing the shoulder blades down the back. Look at those index fingers, they're parallel with each other, and the gaze is right in between my thumbs. Okay? I'm going to push the ground, scoop the belly, and this sacrum is going to have a forward motion. So I'm just going to rise, and I'm going to bend to gain my momentum, look right in between my thumbs, the end of that exhale, float up, float down. Try it again. Rise, bend, look right in between my thumbs, up, and back down. Okay? So if you're new to this, shoulders down, low belly scoops, it's like, Yep, and that's as far as it goes. It's can I control this without coming up here and doing some freak out <laughs> motion that the body just kind of goes to that state sometimes in. So if you're new, I would invite you to stay a little closer to the ground, land with bent knees, try to control the pose. Um, I always tell my students to kind of think slow motion here. Like, can I float with this grace? And can I come back down with this grace? Okay? So we're just going to try the first hop as a cannibal hop. So I want you to assume your down dog position. Okay? I just want you to just kind of think about really quick, scan your brain of kind of what's about to happen here. Okay. You're going to stay for the big breath in. You're going to rise the balls of your feet. You're going to bend your knees. Look right in between your thumbs. Take a little hop up and back down. Hop up, down. Good. Now I encourage you to reset every time. Reset. Look in between your thumbs. Rise the balls of your feet. Bend your knees like you're jumping into a swimming pool. Cannonball hop it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just upside down. That's the only difference. <laughs> Look right in between your thumbs. There you go. Big toes are touching. Yeah, there you go. How are we doing over here in the sunshine? <laughs> you're like, I'm kind of warm. <laughs> you what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> And nice and slow, you gotta give yourself a rest. You gotta like, whoo, put a little smile on your face. Don't think about it too much. Maybe stretch those shoulders out. Nice work, okay? So you're working to get the hips to stack over the shoulders. So what we're gonna do next is you're just gonna grab your mat partner. And all I want you to do, um, Tiff, will you come into the hop for me? is you're going to take your hand right above where their hand is, okay? Yep, my hand is right above her hand line there. And she's going to rise and she's going to bend and she's going to try to get the sacrum to tap my hand. Yep, and so I'm going to go, okay, you're about two inches away. She's going to try it again. 